Hello, I'm Kath and today I'm going to be talking to you about 21st century skills. The talk is divided into four key sections. Information and media literacy, critical and analytical skills, communication and team working skills, and reflection and self-assessment. Let's start off by looking at information and media literacy skills. Our students today are what we call digital natives. That means that they were born into a digital world. They have information all around them and they're very accustomed to knowing how to access that information. We, as teachers and educators, are the digital immigrants and that means that we've come from a different world and now we're in this world. And in fact, our students often know a lot more about that world than we do. Um, I'm sure you've all had experiences of your students being very adept at using the interactive whiteboard or other pieces of technology. They have an intuitive way of understanding how to access the digital world. So how can we guide them to develop the skills that they really need in this new digital world? In a new information-rich world, the problem is not finding information, it's filtering it and summarising it. Let me give you an example. Say you were to ask your students to find out something about the London Olympics. Back in the old world, what would they have done? They probably would have gone to a library and they would have found five or six books, three of which already would have been slightly out of date, and then they would have used the contents page and the index page to find the specific information they needed. And what do they do now? They type London Olympics into their search engine and they get, and I can tell you this because I did this yesterday, they get 273 million results, like that. So they have a flood of information coming towards them and what they have to do is to filter it. And that's what we as teachers have to help them to do. And one very important thing, I think, is to ask students to always quote their sources because it's very, very tempting for students either to just do a lot of copy and pasting where they don't even read it, they just copy it, stick it into their document, or they can use sources that, as teachers, we may find are not appropriate. If you always ask them to quote their source, that's a very good discipline. It makes them think about where they're getting their information from, and it makes, makes you as a teacher, it makes it easier for you to check on them as well. Um, it's useful to tell your students to look, when they're looking at the sources that they use, Look at those little letters at the end. That will tell you some good information about where that source of information is. So, for example, if they're getting some facts and figures from something that ends .gov.uk, that tells you that that's a government, a UK government website, so it will have reliable information. If something ends .com, that's an American website. If it ends .co.uk, that's an English website. If it ends .ac.uk, that's a university or an academic website. Again, that's information that they can trust. So encourage them always to think about their quote, um, sources and to quote their sources. And then we come to the summarising skill. Obviously, there's no problem at all finding the information, but they have to learn to distill it into the relevant information for the task that you've given them. So at all times, I think it's important to practice summarising skills with your students. Ask them to listen to something and then tell you what it was about in two sentences. Ask them to discuss something with their friends and then report back to you or report back to the class. Ask them to read a newspaper in an article and look for the topic sentences. So keep on practising those summarising skills because they're terribly useful in this day of um, digital and media literacy. Now I'm going to move on to the second section, which is about critical and analytical skills. As I've said, access, students' access to information is unlimited, but knowledge alone is not enough to succeed. We need to think, we need to teach logical thinking and creative thinking. And there are all sorts of ways as teachers that you can encourage your students to develop those two skills of logical and creative thinking. So, for example, set them a challenge to find some timetables, some train timetables, or find out about dates, find out about facts, find out about um, statistics. That's all encouraging those logical 
thinking skills, but at the same time, encourage them to think creatively, think about how they're going to present that material, ask them to design things, ask them to discuss things. So they're not just thinking in one way, but they're thinking in two ways, logically and creatively. And finally, and I think this is really important today, encourage them at all times to express their opinions. Sometimes I think it can be daunting for students because their opinions about everything coming from everywhere, Facebook, Twitter, the internet, everywhere, they're getting different people's opinions. Teach them to have the confidence to express their own opinions as well and give personal responses to information. The point is this, teaching a language is not just about teaching the words and the grammar, it's about using the language as a medium to develop other skills. The next section is communication and teamwork skills. And I do think that your students need to develop those skills to be successful in the modern world. The old image of someone working alone in a vacuum, completely isolated, is increasingly irrelevant in today's society. Today's society is all about teamwork and sharing. Let's just think about that. Nowadays, you sit down, you have a nice cup of tea. Oh, I think I'll just text my friend to tell her how lovely my cup of tea is. I'm going to put my um, status up on Facebook having fantastic cup of tea. And I think I'll also put it on Twitter, lovely tea, hashtag yum, or something like that. It goes out everywhere. We share all the time. We don't exist as tiny little individuals. We're all part of this huge sharing community. And so for our students, it's, it's natural and it's automatic to work together. And it's very important too. Now, fortunately, these are skills that are, you as a teacher will automatically be using in the classroom because you'll be using pair work, you'll be using group work, you'll probably be setting some teamwork tasks and you'll be working in a class. So that one's already done. You're pretty much doing it already and that's great. What we want to do is we want to teach our students to lead a team, but also to be led, to speak out, but also to listen and to compromise and be flexible. Let's just look a little bit more at communication because that's so important as well today. When we have access to Skype and video conferencing and the constant use of webcams and videos and photos means that students have to learn how to communicate their ideas to others. So as a teacher, try to incorporate occasional presentations into the classroom. They don't have to be huge and scary. You can just ask your student to stand up and say something for two minutes. Encourage them to use cue cards, to use bullet points, to use images and sound, but just do your best to um, get them to improve their skill of communication and remind them that the gloss, the image, shouldn't always take away from the content. That's the most important thing. The final part of my talk today is about reflection and self-assessment. So we've talked about communicating with the outer world and now we're going back inside into the student's mind. Communication and teamwork are important, but so are reflection and self-assessment. There are all sorts of theories out there about different types of learners and multiple intelligences. You can talk about visual learners, auditory learners, kinesthetic learners. You can talk about learners who prefer working independently or learners who prefer working in a group. And it's really, really important that you encourage your students to think about the way that they learn and to use those methods when they're trying to learn. But at the same time, students have to learn together using a variety of methods. The modern world is not based on narrow specialties. So provide for different intelligences, different ways of thinking, but encourage all students to try different methods and use different strategies. And let's just look at self-assessment. Help your student to learn to identify their own strengths and weaknesses. Encourage them to develop their own ways of improving. Sometimes as teachers, I know it's very difficult to let go of those reins and you want to be there to guide them and to push them and to show them the right things to do. But at some point we have to hand over those reins to the student. Once you give your students independence, you are providing them with the life skills that they need for 21st century world. Visit our website again to find out more about 21st century learning.